most of the people what i have seen is they think that creating and defining and driving culture is the core responsibility of hr so this is not the core responsibility of hr only hr is a driver for uh, driving the culture creating the culture demonstrating the culture but everyone has to take the collective responsibility Hello everyone. Welcome to the People Led Show. I'm your host Tasin Kazi and our guest for today is Praveen Ratna. He is the AVP of People and Culture at Muthoot Fincorp and is a seasoned professional in the HR space with two decades of experience in the financial services and NBFC sector. Praveen is a firm advocate for data led decisions and has previously held leadership positions at Bajaj Capital and India Bulls. Welcome Praveen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you Sasin for giving me this opportunity. It's a, uh, completely uh, my privilege to be the part of this conversation. Thank you. Praveen, I'm going to start with something very simple and something that we all ask all our all the people leaders who we speak with. Who is the human behind the human resources? So what is Praveen like outside of work? Outside my work, I divide my time into two pieces that is me time and free time. so in me time i always <clears throat> go for some meditation yoga and uh, to evaluate myself where i am today and what i want to be in the future so that is one piece of my me time obviously and in the free time i used to connect with the different professionals networking reading books so <clears throat> it gives me the opportunity to understand what this new generation thinks about and yes watching cricket is again one of my hobby so i spend some time in on to that of course praveen i i love the way uh, you know you explained this me time and free time and i think this is something i've heard for the first time moving on praveen as an as a people leader as in that you are facing at the moment or you see other hr leaders in your space facing so if we talk about the three dilemmas most of the time it is you know aligning hr with the business objective creating culture and employee experience and well being because we are in a world where uh, everything is moving very fast right uh, and everyone want to be the part of uh, that fast moving organization of fast moving space and nothing wrong in that because the entire world is moving at that place so i think these are the three challenges which we should address as a hr professional to make the world better that is great i mean i think these are three you know absolutely important especially considering the way the work styles are changing with remote hybrid coming into the picture with gen z coming into the picture all these things are becoming increasingly important so you mentioned three things aligning hr with business objectives you spoke about culture and you spoke about employee well being and all three are so so important So you know, I'll just want to go maybe a, a little deeper into each of these a, a, along our conversation. And I think the first one I want to you know dig a little deeper on is the culture aspect, because I think culture is so uh, subjective to each organization, to each individual. So how do you define culture, Ravi? What is culture for you? The culture for me is what you are doing regularly, right? That becomes your culture. so when we go to someone's house or when we meet someone elders or so so we need to pay respect so that becomes our culture right and the culture starts building uh, looking at your elders so in the terms of organization also the same thing is because culture as a word is same for every space whether it's your personal life it's your professional life so it's a combination of uh, values attitude behavior right and yes of course you know discipline trust and transparency are the integral part of that you are creating a culture all these you know things should be kept in mind and in creating culture obviously the leaders play an important role 
leading from the front and cascading the same culture into the first line of the organization. Most of the people, what I have seen is, they think that creating and defining and driving culture is the core responsibility of HR. So this is not the core responsibility of HR only. HR is a driver for uh, driving the culture, creating the culture, demonstrating the culture. But everyone has to take the collective responsibility to become the torch bearer of that culture and cascade the thing to the bottom of the line. Praveena, you have shared some very important nuggets there in your response. And if I may summarize it, the, the first thing I liked the best was your analogy about how leaders in an organization are just like elders for children. Whatever culture and value they project, that is going to be passed on the other people in the organization. And that is so true. I also like the fact that you mentioned that, you know, culture is a collective responsibility. It's not about what the culture is, rather how it percolates through the organization is what is important. Moving on, what are some things that you focus on and you would recommend other HR leaders to focus on when you think of employee experience? experience strategy or plan one liner make it simple and transparent because the uh, simpler the things the transparent the things would be it will be very easy to create a uh, better employee experience right because people need not go here and there to understand what does it this line means or what does this mean right for every every individual is different. Now we are living in a much diversified uh, era where gender, education, experience, so all the things are there in one organization. So this is not a one size fit for all kind of strategy that you will put because every individual, every organization, every uh, thing has a different you know structure. And every organization is unique in terms of their culture, structure and challenges. So while you're creating the strategy, you need to understand what employee is looking for, what is their expectation. Because the experiencing employee, their expectation um, might be job stability. Right? Just one example. But the person who is into mid or start of their career, for them, growth, learning curve would be the priority. So aligning with all these things would be required to create a better employee experience strategy. Moving on, Praveen. In terms of listening, so now, you know, these are these expectations are there. You know, there is a requirement for transparency. You need to be aligned with what employees want. But how how are you as a people leader? What are the various ways that you are listening to employees? You know, understanding what their requirements are, what their expectations are, and what are some you know what are some channels that you found most effective in your two decades of experience? The first thing which I would say, and no one can beat that is employee connect. You know, human employee. When I talk about connect, it is not about that, you know, having a call with them. Right? The connect means casually you are connecting. So at times what happens and even I, uh, you know, in the uh, early days, I did also that thing. I followed because I was in that cohort. So um, like whenever it is required, then only uh, you make a call to any of the organization employee. Otherwise, we don't get bothered about that. But lately when I realized that some of the things, okay, we should do. So I started connected casually, right? That connect is important. When you, if you are connecting in that way, I think uh, it will give you better insight from any of the formal connect. So informal connect or you say casual connect is always better than the formal connect. The second thing is, you can roll out some surveys, you can, you know, drop some, you know, for the employee uh, engagement perspective, you can uh, create some team building activities with that. But that is itself, uh, that will give you the insight. I'm not saying that uh, it will not give you the insight. It will give you the insight. But uh, let's say if I talk about employee survey, the uh, survey data interpretation need to be done in a proper way. Got it. Otherwise, it will not make any sense. 
are there any ways so, and um, like i just want to understand from you even like a lot of hr leaders we speak with hr professionals in fact are also they struggle with getting employees to respond to surveys because maybe there is a lack of trust with the employees what are some things that can be done proactively to you know build this trust and improve that you know connect with employees building trust is not a uh, overnight thing that you think today and tomorrow it will get developed it it's a process and it will take some time when you are saying that how to build a trust is crisp conversation i would say if you are talking about any feedback and all whether good bad ugly i am not talking about that how the conversation uh, how the feedback is or what about it is but it should be a crisp feedback then respect as i said respect is important transparency transparency absolutely is important confidentiality is important right when you are building trust that is important probably shifting gears a little bit in terms of employee experience what are some key you know indicators or kpis that hr professionals should keep track of to ensure the health of the organization or the employee sentiment is good what are those uh, key indicators that you would recommend people should you know keep track of so uh, if i talk about uh, keeping track on the employee experience so you can start from the employee uh, you know from the interview stage itself so how the interview stage was let's say you know many many candidate wait for 2 hours 3 hours for getting interviewed right then after that what is your onboarding experience how you how smoothly the onboarding has done what is the training process and is schedule like training calendar sometimes uh, the mm, calendar uh, gets so busy so clumsy that people don't get the time to attend that or if they attend uh, this thing then they will uh, miss another thing so that is scheduling of the training process and calendar is important again what is the technological support you are getting because as a human being we are working in the era where most of the things are based on the technology and how the technology is working for you then again culture how you are finding the culture of the organization what is the work you know work space environment physical work space environment then you can talk about transparent communication relationship with the colleagues and manager that is very important metrics that need to be taken care and satisfaction level employee referral can be one of the key metrics all right then and plan absenteeism that is again where you can chip in so employee referral if i talk about might be every employee is not having that referral so you can use it as a one of the indicator but it is not always that okay you who so is not giving is not engaged with the company but, but at uh, overall level you would want to see if employees are you know referring others to the organization or not yes so if you are satisfied with your organization then only you will refer anyone absolutely this is great praveen can you think of so you spoke about a lot of things that you know you would recommend hr professionals track any example from your own you know experience where you've seen that acting promptly on employee feedback made a significant impact on their experience any such thing that you can think of yes i have so as i said the employee connect is important right and the second uh, and the second most important thing is how you are interpreting the feedback right. these uh, two aspects i have uh, you know is spoken about earlier also so um, again i will go back to oh, another in the past of my experiences where the person was not so much engaged the productivity was not uh, good we have connected with that uh, person uh, so j- just a casual connect okay have a tea and all and start discussing so i spent two days three days on the casual connect only and during the conversation i came to know that he is not happy with the role what he have been uh, looking for what the area of interest is this is completely different so when while drilling you know more 
I understood, okay, and this person is having the better interest or, you know, alignment with some other department. After that, we have shifted that person to another department through um, internal communication and all. We have shifted to another department. And he was happy and he did a good job. After that, he stayed somewhere around uh, two or three years. That is great. So I think in a crux, uh, what you know you, you you said in the beginning, keep it simple and transparent. At the end of the day, I think you know this is what it is all boiling down to: to have simple, transparent conversations. Yes, uh, as I said in the middle, that uh, communication without agenda is very fruitful. Yes, absolutely. And as we close out, Praveen, one last question for you here is what are some things that you recommend HR professionals can do to keep attrition numbers in check, especially for their top talent? Like what are some things that you can do to keep your top talent, you know, going on further in your organization? If you're talking about only top talent, so I will give you the holistic uh, thing because attrition is attrition and uh, is important for every organization. So it is always good to set a uh, realistic, uh, you know, expectation. Offer appreciation even for a, a small achievement and not in terms of, you know, monetary. I'm not talking about the monetary terms. Give some appreciation a certificate or mm, not even a certificate is required if you uh, stand up on the floor and appreciate the person that is well enough to build the confidence in that person right treat humanly and uh, recognize the effort of the employee fair compensation so these are the few things which are you know which you might have heard from so many professionals the challenge is show them the path Show them the career path. Provide them the opportunity to grow. Right? Involve, if you're looking at your, the top talent, involve your top talent into the decision-making, you know, uh, roles, decision-making capacity. Pay. Groom them for a future, as a future leader. Because that is going to be a future leader for you. So your succession planning and all you can do from here. Then, of course, you need to analyze the path data of the exit interviews and reasons you know of resignation to analyze that how the things are not working for you right the employees are going so at what tenure they are uh, suppose one employee is leaving after let's say 15 20 years there would be some trigger point that after 15 years if the employee is leaving what would be the reason of that or if even the employee is leaving in six months. What is the reason of that? So, so identifying uh, trigger points. Yeah, identifying trigger point is important. In one of the conversation I was uh, having with someone in regard to some other you know, different company. One employee has left in within I think four or five months. So he was little worried about that when we more dig into that that okay what is the problem why it has been done to that the picture was completely different the role which was offered was completely different and for the profile which he has uh, given to her that was completely different so there is a misalignment of the role offered and profile that should be avoided because on the hiring time, effort, cost which you are putting for bringing one employee after three months, four months, five months or so, you again have to put the same time. That's right. So it hampers the uh, you know productivity, cost. So these are the few things. So compensation, wellness. So these are the very generic things which everyone is speaks about. But you know, triggering, getting the trigger point is more important. That is great. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think that's it, Praveen, from my end. For me, the five keywords that I took away from this conversation, and you know, I ca cannot agree more. The, you know, uh, on this is first is to keep your employee ex strategy simple. Keep it transparent. Respect everybody. Casual conversations. Have casual conversations and. 
use technology to enable your team you know to have the you know have these uh, casual connects to you know to enable them to provide better experiences to employees so i think sometimes you know we get stuck in the whole race of strategy and you know overthinking things that we kind of forget the basics and i think what you've spoken about today is so much to do with the basics of you know employee experience and employee engagement so thank you very much praveen thank you for uh, thank you for your time today and it was great having you here Uh, thank you, Nadine, and once again, privilege to be at the part of this conversation. Thank you once again.